Hello, everyone, and welcome to the second session in a three-part panel discussion series, Blood Cancer Explained, hosted by AbbVie. In our first episode, we discuss the complexities of blood cancer and what distinguishes it from other forms of cancer. We will continue our discussion today with information about treatment options after a blood cancer diagnosis. For all of the panelists, unmet needs still remain for those living with a blood cancer. Um, so from your perspective, what do you feel particularly passionate about when you think about blood cancer research or treatment innovation? There's not as much mainstream focus in the treatment of blood cancers as much as solid tumors, and there's no screening tools. So if you think about screening tools for solid tumors, you have um, mammography or mammograms for breast cancer, and you go in you have uh, maybe a chest x-ray or CT scan for lung cancer, but there's really no screening tools for, for blood cancers. So as simple as a blood draw is, um, patients don't get them as often, but this is the best way to, to figure out what is going on, if there is something going on, and it goes back to the fact that we don't have any screening tools for this. So I will take a little bit more general approach. So um, sig significant advances in the treatment of blood cancers has enabled patients with certain types of blood cancer to actually get cured. And also some patients, they are being successfully treated, meaning they're experiencing long periods with, with their disease uh, uh, is under control. However, there is still a critical unmet need for patients with rare or difficult to treat blood cancers or patients who have exhausted all available, available treatment options. Furthermore, for patients who progressed after frontline or several lines of treatment, there is still a need Right, to improve survival while having a good quality of life. Michelle, you're often the person on the front line, you know, speaking to a patient or a caregiver um, who's just been recently diagnosed or on a, a new blood cancer journey, um, and you're the very first voice they hear at the LLS. And from your perspective, you know, what are the unmet needs that you see still for blood cancer patients um, and the blood cancer community? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is when I talk to someone who has been diagnosed for years and didn't know we existed or other resources existed and we're trying to go it alone, that's very frustrating for me because I know that there's so many things out there that could help them and educate them and support them and give them potentially other options to, to learn about their disease. And just making sure that the word is out there, that there is the support and the information and that patients really do need to understand their diagnosis in order to work with their healthcare team to get the best care, to make the best decisions for what their treatment journey is gonna look like. Because for a lot of these patients uh, and a lot of patients who are going through this who have a more chronic form of a blood cancer, they're going to be living with this hopefully a very long time. And they're going to need to understand their disease. They're going to understand, they're going to need the support to keep going and, and find a way to live a full life despite the fact that they have a blood cancer and that it's quite possible, you know, uh, with all the advances that have been happening, especially recently with blood cancer treatment and, and research, Mariana, uh, again, you're a physician um, and you've had firsthand experience um, in understanding really what a, a patient's journey is like once they're diagnosed with a blood cancer. Compared to 20 years ago, there's so much more um, to be able to offer a blood cancer patient today. But talk to us about what more you would want to be able to offer uh, a blood cancer patient in terms of research, um, effort, or most importantly, a treatment option. What are some of those new additional advances that you would be hopeful for? The truth is, in the past, people diagnosed with blood cancers really didn't have many treatment options. Basically, chemo and radiotherapy were the only options they have. So the amount of research on blood cancers has literally doubled in the past decade. There are tremendous research and treatment innovations that bring significantly better outcomes than what we really had before. I will just give you one example. In past, chronic myeloid leukemia was considered a deadly disease. Before, when we didn't have the targeted therapy, the five-year survival rate for people with chronic myeloid leukemia was only 22%. Today, 
the overall five-year survival rate is 90%, which makes a huge difference for those patients. New treatment modalities are being developed to address unmet needs for patients with rare or difficult to treat blood cancers, or for patients who have exhausted all available treatment options. Today, we have promising therapies, including immunotherapies, chemo-free regimens, multidrug combinations, chimeric antigen receptor or so-called CAR T-cell therapy, bispecific antibodies, and so on. So ultimately, as with all other cancers, our goal is to cure blood cancer. And also at the same time, we are looking for an option to extend the time patients with this disease can live while having a good quality of life. Even within the same diagnosis, you may not have the same situation as somebody else. So even if you know somebody with the same diagnosis, their prognosis or their their treatment protocol may look very different from yours because of the fact that we know so much more now on a molecular level that it really is individualized. So you can't just say, oh, well, my neighbor has this or my cousin had this or it's all gonna be very different. And it really is important for you to know for you with your doctor and your healthcare team, what does that mean for you? Not just for everybody or anybody else who has a diagnosis. We're all truly um, motivated, right? To keep that innovation going. And thank you for that inspiration. Thank you for listening today. And please be sure to tune into the next video in this three-part series. As a reminder, please note the educational content of this video is not intended to be taken as medical advice and should not replace the recommendations and advice of your doctor. Please take a moment to review the disclaimer displayed on your screen. For more information, please visit www.abbey.com. Thank you again for joining us.